Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to the Iowa Community of Practice. This is Jessica Crejo, uh, a member of the Employment First Leadership Team for Iowa and part of the Iowa Coalition for Integration and Employment. Uh, welcome to March's Community of Practice. Uh, thank you to Folk Rehab, as well as the Iowa DD Council for their continued leadership and investment in the Iowa Community of Practice. Uh, believe it or not, we are in year uh, was it year seven or eight, right? We started this in 2014, and here we are again in 2021. So uh, really exciting and, and glad to have you back for March. Um, today's webinar will be recorded, and we'll be sure to share the recording um, along with the materials out to the mailing list after the webinar. If you would like to be added to the mailing list that, don't, that aren't currently on it, just shoot me an email at pruittjess at gmail.com. And I'll get you added. Don't forget that you can view the archive of recorded webinars dating back to 2014 via the ICIE YouTube channel. Uh, you can also find those same uh, recording links and those materials um, on the VR website as well. Uh, captions are provided for today's webinar and you can use the stream text link there in the chat or if you click uh, the closed caption button and select live transcript down there at the, mine's at the bottom of my screen at the control panel there. You can have those kind of pop up live as we speak. But again, you can see the full transcript if you need it at the stream text link. Um, thank you to our captioner, Heather, and to uh, the Center for Inclusive Design and Innovation of the Georgia Institute of Technology. I think they've been with us a couple of years providing our captions and we really appreciate it. So I think that is all the housekeeping that I have for you right now. Let's just stay muted and uh, you can leave your camera on if you would prefer, otherwise you can turn it off. And then when we open it up for discussion, uh, you are welcome to unmute and or turn on that camera, share any comments or questions in the chat and I'll help field those for uh, Corey and Erica. So I think without further ado, um, I'll just kind of get us framed up here for today and hand it over to our presenters. So oftentimes in employment services, right, we hear about this phrase or these terms of, of networking, uh, building and developing relationships, leveraging our social capital. Uh, but what, what is all that? What does that really mean? And how does that help us um, as we go about implementing and partnering with folks in supported employment or whether it be in customized employment or IPS, kind of regardless of our approach or what techniques we use, Right? There's always best practices, and we have two of the best with us here today. We have Corey Smith, who's a senior associate with Griffin Hammonds Associates. Uh, he provides training and technical assistance all over the country um, around customized employment, supported employment, grading funding, um, and particularly on building social capital and community action teams right, for people with disabilities, their families, uh, providers, high schoolers, the high schools, different funding sources. So we're really excited to have Corey with us today um, and to share his, um, his vast experience and wonderful stories. I just, I'm so excited, right? Erica's not in her head. Yeah. Corey's stories are the best. Um, and then Erica Kishpaw, we're so excited to have you today. Um, Erica oversees the supported employment services um, that specialize in customized employment services for Keystone Human Services out in Pennsylvania. Uh, her passion for seeing people live meaningful lives is what led her to employment services back in 2010. Um, and Keystone services have really grown over these last four years uh, from one full-time employee to a team of eight now full-time employees. Um, and again, Keystone uh, provides employment services to folks uh, for over 45 people right now, right? And supported employment and you focus primarily on customized employment. Mm -hmm. Um, and you're going to talk about um, a lot of the same strategies that Corey is going to talk to us about today and kind of what it looks like um, on the ground as you implement, right? So very yeah. happy to have you. Um, and remind me, your community is a kind of a smaller community, Erica, right? Um, smaller. Yeah, I'm, I'm out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. So that's in the central part of our state. And so... Um, we're kind of a mid-sized to small city, and then it's rural, like 15 minutes out. Perfect. That's yeah. So it's kind of similar to Iowa. So yes. <laughs> right, without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Corey and Erica, and thanks so much for joining us today. 
Great. Thanks, Tess. So I, I just wanted to brag about Erica a little bit. So I've known Erica for about 10 years and she came out of residential. And we all know that that some of the people that we work with have have family, have some have, you know, what this elusive social capital is. And, and she's taken her entire career on taking people that that, you know, people that live in group homes, people that have nobody. Um, so we're, we really, we put this together. We wanted to focus on, but what do you do with the person, right? That, that has nobody but you. And th this first slide is, is just fun. Uh, a, a young man from New Jersey um, who had a, ha has an in for um, mascot work. And then the, the, we, we found the gentleman who invented the Philadelphia Philly for the uh, Philadelphia Phillies baseball team. And he, the guy who, the marketing director for the Phillies, who, who um, designs all, all the, does all the training for mascots for college and professionals and around his business partner who makes all the costumes, they basically inherited Chris and they, they've been on his community action team for years. And Chris has had uh, all kinds of different jobs and a little bit of self-employment, but mostly uh, wage employment around doing mascot work based on like two of the best in the industry. And, and we were just lucky that somebody knew somebody, you know, across the backyard fence as all that came together. Um, so I want to just take just a minute, talk about, you know, defining some terms. So we, we spent a lot of time talking about community, right? So what is community, right? A group of individuals that share mutual concern for each other. And this summer when we were all in lockdown, I was feeling pretty isolated and I started reading this, this book called The Art of Community and, you know, try, try, trying to learn everything I could about community and social capital and all this kind of stuff. But with, within, you know, if we're going to call somebody a community, there, there's com, uh, commonalities, shared values, shared interests and identity. Um, how we learn is, so we're all a part of different kinds of communities, right? And then this social capital, we always hear about social capital. And, and it, this is a longer version, but it's, it's a network of relationships, basically people who care about each other, social groups, interpersonal relationships, identity, norms, values. But I think the, the thing that the elusive thing that we, we struggle with is this whole thing about reciprocity, right? Most relationships, there's an interest and people share an interest and there, there's kind of a give and take, right? And I think sometimes with employment, we're out there just, we're always asking, we're always just begging for a job and we're not building the partnerships the way we should. So, so we want to think about, and this came from Wikipedia, how, how do we, how do we build those partnerships, right? Uh, and, you know, with, with social capital, I think the issue is we want people to, to belong, right? We, again, we want people to, to engage in it. We need to engage our communities. We need to build trust. We need to be participating. We have to share values. Um, and so my, my wife is a, a practitioner of holistic health and uh, so, um, she's a life coach and spirituality and everything. And, and I've learned a lot from her about the law of attraction. So I thought, you know, like this idea of the law of attraction, right? It's a philosophy suggesting that we have positive thoughts, we have positive results. But but I think the biggest thing is when, when we're trying to build as Carrie Griffin would always say, hiring a person with a disability is always a very personal decision, right? So the idea is, you know, when we've been doing community-based work assessments, and I think of back of my 30 years in the field, I used to call people and say, hey, you want to hire somebody with a disability? And we all know that doesn't go very well, right? So I, as Carrie would say, we hire people like us. And that means people with similar interests and in skills, right? So we want to think about what our people are interested, what they're good at, um, and we want to be really intentional with, when we're making building these relationships, and we want to be confident. We want to visualize success, and then when, once we make a commitment to a job seeker or to a, uh, an employer, we, we we want to be accountable that we're going to do what we're, we say we're going to do. Right. So I wanted to give you some examples. We're we're going to hit you with all, mostly the things we learned during COVID. So I'm just going to give you some examples of pre-COVID that hit some highlights. So I, it, the people who know me well, I'm always talking about who is your honorary mayor? Who is that person in your life who can charm the bark off a tree? Who's that person 
that knows somebody who always, who helps you make those connections, right? And I have to honor Clint here as a young man from Penargill, Pennsylvania, of all places. And when we first met Clint, he um, lives in a rural community, has some pretty significant uh, disability issues. But what we, we found was he wanted to be a notary public. And we, did, we went to his high school graduation party and over 300 people showed up. And I, you know, at that time, we just moved to Pennsylvania. And I asked my wife if I died, how many people she'd get for the funeral? She thought about 12. So Clint's got a lot of social capital, right? So when I'm out, you're hearing me talking about find your honorary mayor. Well, Clint is the honorary mayor and I always have to credit him with all of that. So how, how do we spend, we got to spend more time being engaged in our community. Honestly, I, I think we, we, you know, if we're going to be as good, we, we should be, community building and just getting to know people should be a billable service at some time, right? There's a young man in, in uh, Michigan, I, when I met him, he was sleeping at a day program table and his dad said, he's a Shakespearean actor. I'm like, excuse me. So we engaged his community, met all these folks. We actually, you know, got him a job working at the radio station, um, doing voiceover and, and working, doing all kinds of stuff in the arts, right? So th this is, a, this is a Stephen from Michigan, who we first met him, you couldn't get him out of bed, right? Uh, lazy, the guy across the street said, I'd never vouch for that kid. He won't even rake his, his mom's leaves, but, but the, his parents are divorced, but his two sets of grandparents are still tight. So we started a community action team with them. And, what, and they know everybody. And his one grandmother was actually the former retired mayor of Muskegon, Michigan. So we, he was kind of artsy. He could cook a little bit. And, and we, we found his grandmother contacted the minister and the minister called his brother who set up uh, the community-based work assessment and, and they weren't hiring, right? In all these situations, nobody was hiring and this turned into a job, but, but we had to have all those connections. So what I'm trying to avoid, you know, I do a lot of training and we have so many talented people who are out there by themselves, right? Particularly in the winter with no help and it gets lonely, right? So we're, Griffin Hammers, we're always, particularly me, where I'm always promoting, we need to, we need to develop these, the, uh, what we call a community, I call a community action team, is a circle of support, a team focused just on employment. We have a lot of people that with the, you know, they're, they're North Star and they're, they're gonna go on vacation and everything, but they're sitting home in poverty, right? So how, how do we bring this group together that helps us? Uh, you know, it's just, it's just an imperative with making connections. Uh, and I also wanted to pick on organizations a little, this is Ronaldo, and he just got to today, God, things are so weird. He just got some big honor award with, he's going to be presenting his art somewhere with the president or something. I can't, he's just always doing stuff. And we were working with Jewish Family Children's Services in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And the, the board of directors has all of these grandmothers that are on the board who have a little bit of this, like money. Like, you know, I got two kids in college. I got no money. And, and they're really interested in art. And they adopted Ronaldo years ago and about, five years ago, made $27,000 one year selling his paintings, right? Supported by the board of directors. So those of you out there in leadership positions and, and when you're thinking about your, when you're putting your board together, like, you know, we're in the business of helping people get jobs, right? So who, who can help us, you know, open doors? Who, who knows somebody who's, who's got the honorary mayor um, that we need to think about? Erica, you want to take it over with, and, and then COVID hits. And then yes. Eric and I have been friends forever. And we started <laughs> partnering on how do we not let this thing die? Go ahead, Erica. Right, because um, as you can see, you know, all I'm sure everywhere, the businesses were just shuttered and closed. The day programs were closed. Everybody was at home and job seekers were unable to leave their homes. So how, how do we deal with that? And we were thinking that, we really needed to do some things virtually and take advantage of, of um, new ideas. And like um, we have up there, something learn something new every day. That was what became kind of our mantra to, to keep moving forward. And so we figured out how to do some task-based activities uh, with friends and neighbors. The next page. Okay talks about that or we're going to talk about that a little bit longer oh you want to go back yeah. 
No, I think that's fine. Okay. So we had the barriers of having um, uh, people, we, we thought, oh, technology. We had been meaning to work on technology. We had some professionals come in and teach us how to use, make visual resumes and how to use apps, but we really didn't take any, um, a big initiative or, you know, once we started on that, it kind of dwindled off as we're busy in the everyday trying to help people find employment. And so this was a great opportunity now, since everybody's at home, to use technology. But the people that are being supported don't always have that option to get the technology. So that's where we supplied more training to employment specialists. And then we actually supplied um, people, their circle of support, opportunities to use equipment so that we could communicate with them back and forth. And we learned a lot through all of this. And some, you know, sometimes you learn from mistakes or things that don't go well. So we did have technology that broke down. We had this um, terrible computer that had the fan going every time the person was trying to talk when we were doing an informational interview. So um, we had um, other background noises that were going on that you wouldn't think about people, the lighting was terrible in some situations, but it wasn't really all that bad in the fact that we were learning and become more proactive in the future as we keep going on. And because we had to deal with social distancing, we became very creative on what uh, we, uh, what and where we could meet people. So outside or in garages, because you can open up to the outside. So even though it was like, 20 some degrees out in the beginning of December, we could do that. Um, we also focused on developing community membership. And so there's the, the large size or the large looking, the macro part of this is getting involved with Chamber of Commerces and all these different groups that we have listed here. And what the value of that is, is as you go and, and meet people and what I, recommend is like getting on a committee because then you get to actually know the people it's not people you see once uh, once a month or once every three months because you're on some subcommittee and coming keystone human services is a nonprofit organization so what i um have observed that some is that nonprofits come and go um, at these at chamber meetings. They come, they say what their fundraiser is, and then they leave. And you don't see them until next year when their fundraiser comes up again. But when you stick around and you get involved in a committee, then people uh, are willing to talk to you and they see that you're really committed to economic development. Excellent. So then there's all these other um, ways of getting involved too, is that you find social media groups. So that's been a great ad, um, advantage to us right now. And we also have found that because the business world is looking at how can we connect with our customers and can't, um, and yet keep it socially distanced and safe, there's been a lot of pop-up business events. And so that's been a great way to, keep in contact with the business community during COVID among some of these other groups. So then when you get to relationship mapping and that is something that Corey has always been talking about, we found that this was invaluable uh, during this time. And first you identify the people that the job seeker knows. And some of that is what Corey had mentioned in those previous stories. And then you start to identify what the employment specialist knows and who they know. And here's an, an example of what that looks like of somebody filling out a relationship chart. And when um, they go through this, what we've learned in recent um, exercise is that um, people start getting excited when they start thinking about, well, I have a friend that knows uh, that is the chamber lead or the young professionals lead, you start talking to them and you get advantage of all the people that they know in these large organizations. 
And at the same time, you start talking to personal friends. And this is an example of Sean doing a great job. And she, we highlighted Leela Nelson. She started talking to him and he gave her, I don't know, she came out of doing this exercise like with four, four pages filled of people that she now can get in touch with and has a contact for them. Like somebody she knows, knows them or somebody, you know, it might be one more step removed, but she um, did a fantastic job. And we determined we really should be keeping these things. I use them in the past to get people's individual action teams um, to be supporting them. But I realize now we really should be keeping these for the variety of people we support because most of the people that Keystone Human Services supports does not have any kind of social capital. Thank you. Thank you. So remember that, that what Eric and I have been focused on is people in group homes, uh, pretty much almost exclusively, who have little to nobody, right? So like I think you've heard before, we've got to go use our social capital, find it in a different way. And I, and I think the first thing we need to do, and I'm, I'm talking out of order, but we had some, one of Erica's people, Sean, you hear about him. And this idea was he liked tools from his dad, but we didn't know if he had any skills, right? So we went, Erica stole her husband. We spent an afternoon with her husband teaching him how to use power tools and how to use hand tools. And he was phenomenal. And, and I remember, we don't have time for the video, but I remember Eric and I going back and forth, dude got skills, right? And, and, and then how, so you, we got to figure out who people are and how they connect. And then the other thing I'm thinking about, I'm trying to take this champ, honorary mayor champion, there's, there's a bunch of you in this training are like, well, that's who I am, but, but we need more of that, right? So this is Achilles is a really dear friend of ours and he's a marketing branding expert, right? And, and he's a champion, he's an honorary mayor, he's a connector. If you read the book, The Tipping Point, he, we talk about uh, connectors and Achilles knows everybody and he's just a walking, talking, uh, relationship building, hu wonderful human being champion, right? So this just starts in conversation, like Achilles lives in our basement and, and, and we have Justin, you'll hear about, who um, is a guy in, in Missouri who has a business that we're helping with and he basically wants a head shop and Achilles developed the branding and get, just because that's what he does. And then we have a, another friend of her is that he built her website na named Christina, right? And, and we just start having these conversations all the time. So, and, and I'm probably jumping around here a little bit, but Bridget is the person we've really had a lot of fun with. So, um, so Erica, talk, talk about Bridget. Okay, Bridget um, moved to the Harrisburg area um, several, well, it's probably been about nine, 10, maybe even a, a year ago. And she, whatever family she has is in a, a county that's a couple counties north of us. And so she really doesn't have any family in the Harrisburg area. Um, and so she was new to the area, no family in the area, new to Keystone Human Services and uh, wanted to get a job. And so we wanted to figure out what, what caught her attention. And we found out that baking, she really likes to bake. She talks about baking and she um, demonstrated skills with baking. But, but so, not many. <laughs> <At that yeah. point. laughs> she knows a lot more now through all of this. Yep. I mean, yep. <laughs> so this is Bridget all excited because um, she was connected to a lady in Alabama who is a professional baker and, and they had an informational interview and Tammy shared what, how she got started and um, Bridget and Tammy just started talking and um it, Bridget was just interested in trying some of Tammy's recipes. And so they developed a relationship through Zoom. Who knew? I mean, I know that we did all of this because of COVID, like I said earlier, but this is great. Forget COVID. This is just really a great thing to start using is um, virtual informational interviews and talking to people through Zoom meetings, in addition to seeing them to face to face. That's that can't be replaced. But and Erica, just linking great. this back to social capital that I met Tracy when I did a, yeah. 
a virtual training for a group of parents in Alabama. Alabama. And Tracy's this wonderful human being who basically adapted. Uh, uh, Bridget, so sorry, I could keep going. Yeah, no, well, that's that's what it came to. And so um, she offered to send Bridget items. And so here's some of the items that she sent her. And this actually, I'm now jumping ahead. This actually came, some of these items were requested from a another ba bake, at a baking experience, but it was virtual from a lady, Christina, that we met through Ar Achilles. Corey's it. friend. And so, um, and so she was very interested in, in doing a baking lesson virtually. So now where do you go and do that? Bridget lives in a group home and, and you, want our do office, this? You, want to, you want to knock yeah. this screen off real quick first? Okay. So she, she, um, she baked the cookies, then she passed them around the neighborhood to get a survey. And then she actually sold some. So we did all of that during COVID and uh, with socially distancing. So, and she got to get that sense of what it would be like to bake, to do it for a living. And none of this was easy. I'm just gonna, we probably, we're gonna run long, but, but Erica, you know, the, the idea of getting into the group home and sometimes you could, and sometimes we had, Erica had to go find their corporate office and, and get permission to sneak in there um, for half of this. So, so there was real yeah. commitment to doing this stuff. Well, so, and I love too that you brought up, you know, that the, the informational interview wasn't with somebody even like in her, it wasn't even in her own state, you know, so Alabama to Pennsylvania. Um, and just that we, you know, we can have these conversations or we can ask for advice, we can make connections. I um, mean, it doesn't always have to be um, in our, our little community, right? It can, we can go kind of go beyond that and we might get back and get a connection in our community and we might not but in this case you know a wonderful friendship was developed um but i, I just like that idea of that we don't always have to it doesn't always have to be an expert a hobbyist an enthusiast a business or whatever in our community right thanks jess yeah yeah so yeah so we we got excited about this and then christina is the woman on the left who's a friend of Achilles who they worked together at the YMCA doing a cooking class years earlier. And, and he built her website. And then my, my son's uh, girlfriend had her birthday coming up and she's a Ruth Bader Ginsburg nut. So we had Christina, who's an artist, make these cookies for Emma, right? So we started building this relationship and I, and, and I said, Keely's, can you connect me with Christina? And, she, and I said, you know, we've got this woman. Could you do a virtual cooking lesson? At this point in time, we'd done the simple stuff. So I was on one end with the Zoom in, at Christina's house. Erica and, and, and a, community, uh, a community support specialist was in, in a kitchen. And they made these high-end um, cupcakes with the, with the middle. Uh, Erica described the custard. Mustard. Lemon curd custard in the middle and lemon buttercream frosting on the top. <laughs> right. And this was a three hour lesson. Unfortunately, Corey dumped a cup of coffee into his computer and lost it. I'd love to show you that. But we, what we saw was Bridget, this woman with all these, you know, labels of incompetence and, and no stamina. She hung in there for three hours. And, 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 we, and Christina was like, oh, my God, I will bake with this woman anytime. I, I will go down to Harrisburg and help her run a gig if she's going to say, and she's going on and on and on. Right. And then, um, and then the guy, gentleman on the right is an employment specialist friend of mine from Maryland. Who's, who's a, a like a top chef, right? Um, it, I, I'm just teasing. I got two kids in college, but the amazing things you can do if you don't have kids. Uh, uh, so we're going to have, I think next week, he, he's going to do, we, we're still going to let Bridget decide. But right now we've just, he's going to make fancy bread. And if she wants to barbecue, what he can make anything. So that's, that's on, that's for like, so now what we, we think we, we've developed that with our first virtual, um, you know, community action team, right? They're all pitching for her. Mm -hmm. They'll all do anything they can to advance her career. And, and then, um, so a kid, still having, you know, a, a branding person living in my basement, 
you'll meet Justin is a young man from Missouri who has nobody. I mean, think about that person in your life who's been kicked in the teeth and kicked around. We've all had that person. You adopt that person. You have them over Thanksgiving because they got nobody, right? And and during COVID, he was like not out. He has cerebral palsy, all these complex things. And when we got to know him and basically through some really good people, he wants to basically have a headshot. That's his kind of his thing. So Achilles is on the phone with him for an hour and a half. And then he comes up with, they come up with this, you know, mystic dragon novelty oddities and like, okay. And so, so this is Justin is a guy, you know, pretty complex. And, and then uh, his, his employment specialist is working with him. And we, he, we went out and got to know kind of that market and they found timeless treasures. It's like a high end thrift. If you have those place where everybody starts and this, this husband and wife just adopted him. And, and we got Volk Rehab in uh, Missouri to come up with some business feasibility money. So he's going through his feasibility and the business is taking off and he's selling products. I, I didn't put any in there, but, um, and then, you know, the thing about Justin, he was telling his employment specialist the other day, people aren't gonna believe I'm doing this, right? Cause nobody thought I could do anything. He was just wasting away in a group home. And, he, and he's killing it right now, absolutely killing it. And, and, and we're getting him, and he's the, he's the, like, I don't think Justin has a, you know, intellectual disability. I think he has severe CP, speech and language impaired, and, and has, you know, a lot of medical stuff, but, but we figured out how to kind of unleash him, I guess. Uh, and this is Justin's first sale. Um, and the other thing about, two things about Justin's social capital and this law of attraction, so I've never, if you've been around as long as I have, I've always said there's two kinds of people we serve. Those people who don't live in group homes and those who do, it's always just harder, you know, for one reason or another. And um, the, the group home, these, 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 these people, they, they've just, they'll do anything for Justin. He's the entertainment committee and, and like whatever he needs, they're, they're jumping in. What do we need? How can we help? He's like the entertainment committee. So this was his first sale a few, few weeks ago. We got a kick out of. So Achilles did this for me. It was like connecting the dots, right? So I'm calling Achilles a champion and he helped us meet with Christina. And then Bridget has these three bakers. And then with economic development, because I do a lot of that work, I'm, I'm helping Christina and her business partner look, the, write a business plan. And, and I got to tell you guys, with, with the new uh, package coming out, there's going to be a whole bunch of uh, economic development uh, grants out there. So I'm helping them find some, they're going to do startup and they've already committed to hiring two people with a disability that, that just because they're friends with uh, after they get started. And they're going to do this high-end bakery in the town that I live in. And they're going to do baking class. Well, and the one she's going to bake and, and he's a master chef and they're going to teach classes and they're going to do all this high-end kind of stuff right down from the new brewery, right? Um, so the downtown where I will live is really kind of coming back. And then his connection with Justin got things started, right? And oh, and the, and the other thing about Justin, which is really interesting was, uh, and I have releases for all this, but, but Justin had nobody in his life, but his ex-sister-in-law, his brother's in, in prison, his ex-sister-in-law stays involved and she, was, she didn't want anything to do with him anymore. Like, you know, like, and then she heard about him starting this business and we were just gonna help him uh, make, I was going to just buy him some t-shirts for marketing. So he texted me the other day. My sister is, um, said, no, she's buying and designing all the t-shirts, my business. And I didn't know he had a sister, right? I thought there's a sister appeared. Cause I spent a lot of time with this guy. No, it's, it's the ex sister-in-law has got back into the game and she, she's just so, so proud of him. So he's being perceived differently, right? If that makes any sense at all. Um, and I screwed up this screen. You you just talk about the, the, the sorry about the screen, Erica, but uh, I'm, sure really enough, of, that's, I'm really proud of these two guys and against all odds, right? Yeah. Um, Kevin is somebody that we also support that's in a group home and he um, had a job that he didn't really like, but he, and he really wanted a new job, different job. And it just turned out that with the um, brainstorming, he brainstormed with his a residential team and came up with the idea of starting a bait business. So that's what Kevin's Wigglers is. It's selling worms. 
and red worms and night crawlers. And um, Tim, his employment specialist is there because then he just got it, he got involved. I mean, he was involved with Kevin, but it was really exciting to have such a um, support from the residential team. And it um, and in that uh, venue, they actually built the tables in the basement. And believe it or not, we are growing worms in yeah, a so life. Here's the home. person on the left. Yeah. It, so brought her husband in on Sunday morning in a group home without permission and built tables, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm thinking most places that would be an incident report in a, in a firing, but she didn't care, right? She loved yeah. Kevin and, and they built these tables on a Sunday morning. Yeah. And you got to brag so, about John for a minute. We're doing pretty good for time. You got to brag about John. Okay. So John is another person that we consider an honorary mayor. mayor. And we showed that picture about the virtual um, business team for Bridget, but he's adding people to her business team or her action team um, that are local. And so somebody who is a retired baker and chef and has been a kitchen manager is going to give her an in-person lesson at John's church. He's an associate pastor at a church. And so she, he knew that she would love sharing her skills. So that's something that's going to be scheduled in this upcoming, in March, I guess we're in March. So and, and I got to say, because Erica won't let me do this, but but she can't get her hands on me to shut me up today. It's like, you know, Erica's this person that's committed to people, but but she has this gift for attracting the right people and being really good to her staff and getting people like, and like, how do you hire staff? How do you keep staff? Well, we all we still have turnover problems, but but she's out there modeling all this stuff and she creates this culture where people get recognized for do this stuff, you know, and she has a whole bunch of people who do this, right? Who who are willing to take that personal risk and, and to, but but yeah, I think we have to make we have to make it fun, right? You have to be, and there's some recognition to it, but 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 the work has to be fun. And and if you made me going back to like filling out applications for a living, I think I'd quit and be a bartender. <laughs> but but this this is the stuff that I really enjoy, and Erica promotes really well. Yeah, yeah. It, it is exciting, and and um, because recently one of the employment, well, it was Tim, just shared what he was doing with some of his stimulus money and how he was gonna how he was doing something for himself, but keeping his ears and eyes open for making connections in the community. And um, like we, the logo that you didn't get to see is actually a, um, we had the money to do that because I uh, made a donation at our church's youth group for a gift certificate on a logo or from a graphic design person. Um, my husband, who was really great with the garage thing, thought it was really odd that I was, uh, making that donation, but <laughs> it it worked out okay because um, she got really excited, and it turns out that this is her business is a side business. She's really a professor at Susquehanna University, which is about an hour and a half up the Susquehanna River from us, and so um, she teaches marketing. So she is just really excited to kind of keep tabs and support us in future endeavors. So excellent. So I wanted to, you know, what we were doing some of the discovery, but also jobs. So, so we, I was asked to do a training in, in, for New York City for a friend of mine. A couple of us did that. And they have a young man who is interested in getting a job in the arts, right? They're like, I, I pulled that off once in my life. Really? I'm going to do that twice in 30 years? Like, that isn't happening. So Emma is my youngest son's girlfriend, and, and she... She works for Opera America, which is the trade association for the entire opera industry, right? And, Eric, and, and, and Emma is just all that, a bag of chips, and a genius and all this stuff. So we set up this virtual informational interview with her and this young man from uh, New York. And, and I do have to be a bit of a downer here that I don't know if you guys have had, well, let me, let me pick on the Kennedy Institute, the fight, like, uh, the Kennedy Institute of Performing Arts in, in DC that I know of last 25 years, they've been interning people with disabilities. They just don't hire anybody, right? We have some government agencies. I'm sure like I've worked in Iowa, love uh, all you Iowans I'm, and I work in the Capitol. I don't, but I, I bet you, I bet you if, if we went and had a beer this afternoon, you'd come up with five places in Iowa where 
there's these great internships, but nobody gets a job, right? And, and so he'd interned at the Kennedy, uh, no, sorry, at the, the Lincoln Center. And, and well, like, you know, it turned out like 50 people with disabilities have interned there, but they never hired anybody. Well, Emma pulled me aside, like, uh, Corey, that's my number one customer. Would you like me to make a phone call? So she got him a job during COVID, right? He's doing a little bit now. One thing's open up, he's going to be outside, but but because, you know, and, and, and to her, it was like, it was no big deal. I just knew somebody and I just said, hire this guy because he's my friend. They're like, well, yeah, okay. We, and, you know, and they didn't see it as that fancy of a thing, right? It was just, again, but, you know, so how, and then, it, but, it, but, it, but you have to be kind of thinking like, who do we know? How do we connect? And it becomes kind of part of a culture. Oh, we got, we got to talk about Sean here, Erica, please. <laughs> Well, we have been talking about Sean. So he, um, again, he's somebody that um, lives about an hour, well, about 45 minutes north of, of Harrisburg in a small town close to the Susquehanna River. And he, um, he rides his bicycle around town, but he can't seem to really find a job. And so we were supporting him. And um, in his mind, he just thinks he can do dishwashing. And he doesn't really like that, but he's a really social guy. So we were trying to figure out, well, what skills does he have? And so he, um, and it's COVID and the businesses are all closed. So that's when we came up with the idea of having uh, having him come to our house. And but the legend um, was he'd always yeah. said that, that his dad liked tools and he thought he right. might like tools. So right. back in the day, I'd go, hey, Jess, I got a guy who likes tools. And you're like, well, does he know what they look like? Uh, does he have any skills? Or like, oh, we don't know, right? We land on our face time and time again. So let's let's be better prepared. Sorry, go ahead, Erica. Uh, that's okay. Well, so that's exactly what we did. And um, he came to our garage and um, Scott, my husband, had done a couple of like power tools and regular tools. And it was obvious through the time he's Sean spent there, he could do both. He could do both. And he, I hate to be sexist, like, Erica, but this is a guy who handled a hacksaw and, and tore through a metal pipe. This is a guy who took a Zasa and most of us that run a Zasa, you're shaking like this and he's running a Zasa and he's running a power driver and he's doing one thing after another, after another. And Eric and I are, are laughing our guts out and I, we're talking about his skills. And then Eric asks him, hey, Sean, what do you like better, the hand tools or the power tools? She looks at Erica like, duh, and po po points at, you know, at, at, you know, at Scott, like, uh, I want power tools, right? Right, <laughs> he made that very clear. And he was um, uh, like sort of dozing on the way to our house because like it was about a 45 minute try. But on the way home, he, he was talking constantly. So he is really excited. And I guess if we go to the next slide, I think yeah. we have where we're going. Well, that's then we had an informational interview. It turns out that a former um, employee turned friend, boyfriend, my friend's boyfriend, is a master woodworker and cabinetry maker. So he is considered a general contractor, but his expertise is with uh, doing anything with wood in a home. And so he did a, a video uh, with us or a Zoom informational interview and really helped um, tell Sean like how people get started in the business and what to do so that gave the employment specialist and myself information of where to go next with I Sean and how to get him connected. I didn't get that next slide Erica so let's just talk about the ne next steps right with this slide up. Okay and um, so from that so one of the things through these experiences is we realized uh, Sean really needs a mentor and how to do that so we, um, and Kent's suggestion was to find somebody who's active in the business, Kent's kind of semi-retired, and uh, see if he'll spend some more time with Sean. So that got the employment specialist to think about her mother, who happens to work in a construction company or for a construction company that is like in, a, in an organization that's located about an hour away and then in the state of Virginia. So, but her mom gave her somebody who was local that um, 
to give her, uh, and so she talked to her, that person, and that man is scheduling an after hours uh, mentorship thing with Sean. So they're still working on that, but that's how they dealt with it. it I mean, great guy that he knew he couldn't bring um, Sean in during regular business hours because of the COVID restrictions in Pennsylvania, but he's gonna do something after hours. And then John, the honorary mayor, knows somebody in his church who has a tree trimming business. So as soon as the snow's off the ground here in central PA, um, then they're gonna go out and do another work experience there to see the different avenues of Sean using power tools and what he does well and what he likes and where the jobs are. And, and I have a friend who lives in Green Bay, Wisconsin, who works I out of his garage. I forgot that. Sorry, Corey. And he makes, uh, he makes decorations. He makes fancy pens. And he'll he, and we're going to try to like turn this into some training activities. Mm -hmm. um, trying to think what else we wanted to say. But, but we really think this is going to get somewhere. Uh, I wanted to say something about social capital. It must have been a lie, John. Well, but, and I think we're oh, still working on. It. But ahead. Erica, what I'd like, what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, because I th these are these are our friends and family in the call, right? These are our peeps, and, and anything, <laughs> any experience we've had, they've had, or they're going to have. Can you talk about the barriers we've been talking about, and and how you guys been working around it in in Sean's case with, with the other <laughs> program? Yeah. Okay. So because um, that's that's the real world, right? That's yeah. the real world we're dealing with. That's true. That is the thing. So I don't know exactly um, what the services would be called in Iowa, and I'm sorry, I should have found community that out. Community-based supports, it, hanging out in the community. Well, well, yes, and but he also has life sharing or family sharing supports. Right. So. Um, and so his life sharing provider, it's somebody who really liked Sean, like really um, saw that his living conditions at home weren't the best for him. And so the family and her worked out that he could move to her house and live with her and be supported by services through Keystone Human Services. So, but, but that person also has a job. They're actually a special education teacher and so they work 40 plus hours a week and she needs somebody to be with Sean during that, during that time. And she also is a real go getter. So she's out, she's doing summer classes. So she's just busy year round. And that's where our community participation services came in. And they- With another company. Yes, with another company. And, um, and they're providing 40 hours of support Monday through Friday. Babysitting, <clears throat> sorry. For him. And um, so that's sort of the bad news end of it that in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, we can have up to 50 hours of services combined between like community participation, which is in Pennsylvania considered a pre-vocational service. So it's under the context of vocational and employment. So that leaves us 10 hours a week after he's already been busy for eight hours. So that's- well, Let me jump hour. in here. So when you, whoever you are, you know, <laughs> when you set up job development, when you set up a community-based work assessment, when you set up discovery, when you find that the, the person you wanna, you've gotta be on their time, right? You can't be from five to six be with some retired gentleman. So Erica has been working her tail off building relationships internally and externally to get community-based supports folks the skills and the partnership to do community-based work assessments and to do discovery. And I'm hoping in, in the, you know, somebody will put in the chat like, oh God, we, we struggle. I'm guessing we all struggle with, right? But this guy had to be out of the house because this woman said she, he's going to kick my dog. And here's the employment specialist with like, you know, like sometimes it's the workshop or the day program and the other companies got to get their billable hours in. Right. But then you, you find this great person to do job development, community based work assessment. And, and the other company says, no, that, that we, we kind of own this person right now. And I, I, I and I and I think that, it, you know, Eric and her team have just worked so hard on on, on getting through that. Um, yeah, and the other the other business is coming around that 
with certain parameters, they they will work with us. So, you know, it's it's all about scheduling, which is always hard in our business with employment because businesses can cancel their, you know, they're they have a business to run, but um, but we're working on it. We're making forward motion. Absolutely. So in summation, Erica, <laughs> you're up. <laughs> In summation, we had talked earlier about using the macro and the micro approaches to making connections. So I hope you've been able to see throughout the presentation that there's times to use big organizations and um, social groups, and there's times to use the personal one-on-one, -on -one, and you just want to blend those to make connections. Um, then it's important to really kind of map that out, and who do you know, and track that. Um, and then it's always, always, always important to think about, well, go where the career makes sense. No, don't waste time on side things. Go where the career makes sense and, and talk to people who know what makes sense for that career path. And um, I think, Corey, this was your part with the law of attraction, like attracts like, and that's why it's so so important to look at it from a person-centered position. I mean, Keystone Human Services emphasizes person-centered approaches, everything being a person-centered approach. And that's where you're gonna really be able to tap into that lack, like attracts like, um, because you're looking for people in the business community or in a particular business that really um, will get along with the person that you're supporting because they have other interests. And we've life. been developing uh, video portfolios based on, you know, what people are good at. And we show like, in Sean's case, we've got all this video of him being handy with tools and we, with Bridget. I mean, I think she's a pretty impressive baker at this point. So yeah. we put these one minute videos like on a phone, like instead of, hi, you want to hire Bridget? I think she likes cookies. Well, she got any skills? I have no idea. Like we've kind of put some work into it and, and right. And, 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 yeah. and Carrie Giffen would say like, we like, we hire people like ourselves. And that means, you know, I'm not going to hire you because you have a disability. I'm going to hire you because you like baking, that you've got skills, that you know how to use tools. And, mm -hmm. and that we, and we're, 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 we're asking people all the time to commit to expanding our go-to style. And, and I think that was maybe one of the gifts of COVID, Jess, is that it's just forced mm -hmm. us out of our comfort zone and I think that, you know, and then Erica, we'll come back next time. And Erica's working. The other thing is, you know, people say, how do you make most of this time billable? And, and we're working on that, working hard on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we should open up for any questions, uh, Jess, and, and if people, you know, um, see if people have questions, we'll take it from there. Yeah. Yeah, let's uh, and this is just some, some of the references, some of the places like I've learned from, you know, uh, Peter Black, the community belonging, uh, this guy, Art of uh, Community, uh, Robert Putman, Bowling Alone, some of the things that, that mm -hmm. I've learned a lot about social capital from. And this this is our contact information. You know, with the, just once you work with Griffin Hammis, you, you own us, right? We're always <laughs> email or text away. And, so you know, and if, if you wanted to hire somebody really smart that makes this happen at the organizational level is Erica has been kicking butt at this for like 10 years and she has no commit, she has no give. And if you hear of all this stuff, fidelity of customizing, she's more committed to this than anybody I know. But hopefully maybe there's some questions we can help with or if anybody- Yeah, we would love to take some questions. Yeah, questions, comments, scenarios. Um, I just wanted to reiterate, you kind of did it in your summation there, but I was hearing things about, Erica, like the importance of modeling. Um, yes. <laughs> the strategies, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I figured maybe a part of that too, I mean, you guys didn't mention, you know, creating an environment that values um, connecting and relationship building in, mm -hmm. um, in unique ways, right? Um, what does that look like, um, like for your team, like time-wise? I know we talked about, you know, billable and non-billable and stuff like that, but how, um, is there, are there ways that you encourage staff to do that or help create time for them or, or almost like give them permission to do that, right? When there's so <laughs> many competing uh, priorities, right? During the day. Yeah. And it, you know, it changes, like there's like a list of things that you can do or try 
And then at any given time, one of those tools for connecting works for an employment specialist because they're busy um, walking the person through together with this whole employment journey. So they start with knowing who the person is to make it person-centered. And then um, they go into the job development because they know what those likes and how attract, how like attracts like and what's gonna be a good work environment. And then also to help them because you know they help somebody get a job. The person's a little bit nervous about a new job. It helps since we support people who have a primary diagnosis of intellectual disability. Um, it really they really like that continuity of support throughout the whole employment journey. So at times, employment specialists are available to go to those macro things. You know, the young professionals. Um, I encourage them to, you know, look at expanding their own social connections a variety book. of ways that if you know you read you a book what works don't read don't read oh don't read bowling alone read better together it's a short stories on community building <laughs> and if anybody has any questions they can contact us or just sometimes mm -hmm. if you're ending sometimes i can just open the mics and you know tell people to start chatting or whatever works yeah yeah they're free to do that you guys are free to open your mics if you want um and Erica, you said you guys typically do that mapping. I mean, you make that mapping a team effort sometimes, right? Or um... Yeah, we've typically done it in a smaller way. And recently through the things that Corey was teaching, we really looked at expanding it to a place where we would really um, keep it and, you know, and, and categorize it and share it. But that's another thing I usually take I tried to take COVID was a little bit difficult because we were spending a lot of extra time on COVID related things, but we try to have one meeting an hour a month where we're just all talking about leads and connections and who knows this person and, Hey, I've learned this this month. And, and that really seems to help everybody stay alive with being connected. Nice. Yeah. Because that learns something new every day or every week was for you guys, right? Absolutely. Yep. That could be to anybody yeah. and everybody, right? I mean, yeah, but that was really for- Yeah, that was for all, for, all, for all of us. And I mean, honestly, it came out of trying to be put a positive spin because every day something new was happening starting mid-March. And so we just realized, let's just embrace it and see what new things we can learn and apply. And that's where our technology just, really flew off and, and grew. And I got to say, the whole time we're working on this, uh, I'd be like, we got all this set up. Erica, why hasn't the staff called this person? It's like, like, oh, they're under quarantine for COVID, right? And she can't say anything. Oh, they'll be back in about 14 days. And like, you know, I mean, there's been so much COVID knocked down with these guys and they just get keep getting back up. Yeah, Thank you, Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, lots of um, good feedback that it was useful and a, and a fun conversation as well. Um, I think I can capture any questions if they come in after the fact. Okay. Um, sure. We've got about a minute here left. And